One of the most useful editors is the key editor. When you need to edit a MIDI part, simply double-click on the part to enter the key editor. You can actually change this behavior in the Preferences menu. Go to MIDI under Event Display. The default edit action is that the key editor will open when you double-click on a MIDI event. You can change this to one of the other editors if you like. For now, we'll leave it on Key Editor. The Key Editor has five main sections. The top one is where you can right-click and decide what options you can view. The next two sections are the Status Line and the Info Line. You can choose to display or hide these functions in the Window Layout Setup over here. We'll discuss the Status Line in a moment, but for now, let's check this to make it visible. The Info Line shows you the particulars for any selected note. The next section is the area in which you edit and view all of your MIDI data. The last section is the Controller Lane, where you can draw in MIDI controller information. Since we've already covered basic MIDI editing in Level 1, we're going to jump straight ahead into the fancy features. Press the Show Part Borders button. You can now see where the boundaries of this part are. When I drag the borders around, you can see them change in the project page. You can actually move the part end before the end of the MIDI notes, and they will become unplayable notes outside of the part. This is a good way to hide notes without deleting them. You could also use the Mute tool for this, but sometimes this is easier and quicker. When you move notes around and you go past the boundaries, Cubase will ask you if you want to enlarge the part. You can choose Enlarge or Move Anyway. Let's choose Move Anyway. Knowing about showing part borders is good, because if it was off and you moved a MIDI note, you might wonder why the dialog box about enlarging the part was popping up. When editing the MIDI data, you might want to turn off the Solo Editor button so that you can hear just what is playing in this editor. When you exit this editor, all of your music will play together again. When Solo is on, you might want to loop the area you are editing. Create a loop and make sure Cycle is on. The Acoustic Feedback button allows you to hear the notes when you are moving, editing, or drawing notes in. Activate Auto Scroll so you can follow the project cursor as it moves across the key editor. This is handy when you are playing back while zoomed in. You may, however, want Auto Scroll disabled while you are editing a part. That's what Suspend Auto Scroll While Editing does. Make sure both of these buttons are on and make sure the key editor is scrolling. Now begin to edit a note. The key editor stops scrolling and the button turns orange, indicating that the scrolling has been suspended. When you're done editing, simply click the Auto Scroll button again. Even if you attempt to disable it, Suspend Auto Scroll won't let the page move again until you press the actual Auto Scroll button. Let's turn it back on. When Auto Select Controllers is activated, selecting controller events will also select their respective notes. This is handy for identifying what certain note controller data belongs to. You might have a lot of MIDI data and it can be confusing with this feature on. I'm now going to show you why we activated the status line earlier. This display always shows the position of the mouse relative to the piano roll and grid. When you're moving notes around or trying to draw in new ones, this display comes in real handy. The chord note display allows you to see what chord is being formed by a group of notes. Just press play and the chords read out in real time in the display. Just watch this area as the music plays. 